Hi, I'm Jackie French. I'm telling you this story in support of National Adoption Awareness Week. Help us share 15,000 bedtime stories, one for each Australian child waiting for a permanent loving home. Go to adoptchange.org.au slash 15,000 to find out how you can show your support. Once there had been many animals in the sheds and yards around the factory, but those had been in the days after the big flood when foxes and wild ducks as well as birds never seen at the city edges before had come here for refuge. That was when the man had begun to feed them. Dog biscuits for the foxes and seeds and pellets for the birds. The man worked in the factory. When the floods had come, he arrived each morning, long before the other men, to feed the animals in the quiet with no other humans and their noises to frighten them. No animal was scared of a food man. He knew the way of being quiet, just like them. She had eaten the dog biscuits too, sometimes, but mostly her food was what she had lived on as long as she could remember, mice and rats. There was good eating on a rat, especially if you found a nest of them. A nest of rats could feed her and her kittens for days. But the floods were a long time ago now. The other animals had gone, and she was dying. She didn't question how she knew that she was close to death. She just knew it, just as she knew that when she died, her kittens would die as well. Only two kittens this time, small and with their eyes still closed. This morning, for the first time, she had no milk to give them. They mewed feebly behind the boxes in the factory yard, too weak for anyone to hear. She was dying, but there was one thing that she could do. She waited, listening, till she heard the ute, heard the steps towards the factory, but none of them the right steps, until at last there he was, walking in among the sound of engines and other human voices. He was here at last. She pulled up all her strength, the little she had left, nudged the kittens close together, lifted them both in her jaws, stumbled somehow to the factory door, and dropped them. She could do no more. She lay there panting as the world grew dark. What are they, mice? The wrong voice. Another voice. No, kittens. That must be the mother there. A pause and then I'll call the RSPCA. No, she wanted to howl at the world. That wasn't what she had meant at all. But she had no strength to howl now. No strength at all. And then the right voice. Quiet. No need. I'll take them home. The right smell, too, as he bent to pick her kittens up. She didn't know how a man could feed kittens, but he had fed them all after the floods. She knew he would manage kittens, too. It was a strange thought, a human living with her kittens. Could a human teach kittens how to hunt, to hide rats' tails so foxes didn't find their lair? Could he teach them... But even that thought was fading now. But one bright certainty remained. They would be happy, the human and her kittens. They'd be a family. For he must need animals as much as her kittens needed him. And they would be happy, she thought, as the last light crumbled into dark.